Well, it looks like Donald Trump is about to be $3 billion richer, and there's going to be a new company trading on the New York Stock Exchange using the ticker symbol DJT for Donald J. Trump. Now that True Social's parent company, the Trump Media and Technology Group, is going public. The bad news is he's not going to be able to sell any of those shares anytime soon because there's a lockup period or use that money to pay off the $464 million extortion fee that the communists have placed on him. So they may actually try to seize his buildings because he has until today to put up the money or to get a bond. And nobody wanted to put up the bond, but now that this merger has gone through, his company's going to go public. Maybe companies will be a little more comfortable loaning him that money. We'll find out very soon. The media is trying to portray it like he doesn't have any money, but his money is in hard assets, in real estate. He doesn't just have $464 million in cash in an account. He's not a big stock guy, or at least wasn't until now. So we'll see what happens. And of course, the liberals are very upset about it. Here's the New York Times like, tech editor, Kara Swisher, on Bill Maher's show. No, he actually actually just got a, he, this guy is the luckiest guy in the world, but Trump Social, uh, I mean, excuse me, Trump Social, it's, it's Trump Social, but True Social just got permission to go public. Right. And, I mean, and so he's, he's, it's his stake, because it's a meme stock, a little like GameStop. Say it. Um, is worth three point five billion. Is worth three point five billion dollars right now, and it could go higher if people bid it up. Um, so. He definitely made a deal with the devil at some something. 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 Uh, because yeah. he always lucks out on everything. Yeah. He has I mean, the best the enemies. Look at Michael Avenatti. Look at Fonnie Willis now in Georgia. The right. best enemies. Right. Just it helps him so much. And they're finally starting to figure it out that all of the persecution is only turning into promotion. Here is the famous. Democrat pollster Frank Dunce. I want you to remember this moment and don't forget it. If the New York Attorney General starts to take his homes away, starts to seize his assets, it's all going to be on camera. Pundits are going to sit there and scream about this. This man cannot be elected. Which she may do today. You're going to create the greatest victimhood of 2024 and you're going to elect Donald Trump. <laughs> If they take his stuff, he's going to say that this is proof that the federal government and the establishment and the swamp in Washington and all the politicians across the country and the attorneys generals and all of this, that this is a conspiracy to deny him the presidency. He's, <laughs> he's not going to have to say it. Everybody already knows that. He's going to go up in the polls just like he went up every single time they indicted him. The indictment, um, let's not talk about whether it's justified or not, but it will prove the things that he's saying on the campaign trail, and he will go up, and it may just elect him president. Do not forget that. And I say this to the attorney general right now. If you play politics on this, this is what the secretaries of state did in Colorado. It's too late, Frank. We've been trying to tell the Democrats this for almost eight years now. Got some other interesting social media news for you. Remember Parler, which was the free speech alternative to Twitter, which was created in 2018, which was very, very popular because at the time Twitter was run by Jack Dorsey. And then the app stores banned it after the mostly peaceful protest on January 6th, as well as the Amazon Web Services, their hosting provider, and a bunch of third-party software and vendors all canceled their contracts, so that app just disappeared. But then, I forget how long it took, maybe a year, a couple years, then it came back, but then they ran out of money, and then it went offline, and then somebody bought them, and they are getting ready to relaunch Parler. Which, if Donald Trump hadn't launched Truth Social, and if Elon Musk hadn't bought Twitter, then that would be a fantastic idea. Although... We have Gab, but all of the normies, as the kids say, are afraid of Gab because people are allowed to use offensive words and post offensive memes and cartoons over there. So all the mainstream conservatives, they stay away from Gab, but they were all on parlor. But this is, at this point, I'm sorry to say it, completely ridiculous. Twitter's not perfect, but it's a million times better than it was. Truth Social's doing pretty good. Now it's going to be a publicly traded company with a $3 billion market cap. Of course, Gab is really the only true free speech platform. The other ones are just free your speech. 
And then there's Telegram, the app, which thrives. MeWe, which nobody has used, including myself, probably for years. And a bunch of other ones whose names I've already forgotten. Parler was fantastic. It was a very popular, viable alternative to Twitter before it got banned after the mostly peaceful protest. But now Twitter kind of serves that purpose. And so does Gab, which again is the best platform. And so does Truth Social. And so does Telegram and all the other ones. Nobody is going to use Parler other than maybe the social media personalities who will just mirror their content over there but they're never going to actually use it and interact with anybody over there. And to make things even weirder, the founder of Parler, who is no longer associated with the company, John Mates, has just launched another social media platform called Hedgehog, which nobody, I'm sorry, John, I respect John. I met John at the social media summit at the White House a couple years ago. I've talked to him periodically over the last few years, but I'm sorry, nobody cares. And with the election heating up, the fake news about supposed fake news from the fake news is heating up. In other words, the stories in the mainstream media about supposed fake news, meaning news that they want to suppress and calls for more censorship are now increasing dramatically. This was 60 Minutes just last night. And like a broken record, they're complaining about old memes that weren't censored by Facebook. Can we talk about a specific case? It's of Nancy Pelosi. It's a doctored tape where she's, uh, she looks drunk. We want to give this president the opportunity to do something historic. This was the video of then House Speaker Pelosi posted to Facebook in 2019, slowed down to make it seem that she was slurring her words. Yes, it's called a meme. Did it come down? It did not. Why? <laughs> because it didn't violate the policies that they had. So did she put pressure on the company to take it down? She was definitely not pleased. That's a yes. Nancy Pelosi's office and other government agencies pressured Facebook to censor a meme. And this is one of the memes that Don Lemon was confronting Elon Musk about, upset that Twitter didn't take this down. <laughs> and now Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, or technically, to be clear, Meta Platforms, another Mark Zuckerberg-owned platform, quietly added a new algorithm onto their app to shadow ban political content. And in order to try to cover their tracks to add some plausible deniability, they did add a little feature buried in the app. And then the default was turned on to limit political content because, of course, everything that is uploaded to all these platforms is scanned through AI, through character recognition. It knows exactly what keywords and what's said, what the pictures are, who's in the pictures. It's getting very sophisticated. And so they set it to detect political content, which they have been doing, and then automatically just suppresses that content. And speaking of shadow band, many of you have noticed for probably years now, I lost track, that my YouTube channel has been stuck at 1.86 million subscribers because the channel is shadow banned. Most people are not getting notifications. Most people don't directly come to YouTube channels in order to watch channels. They just kind of expect that new videos are going to be showing up in their feed. And that may happen for some people, but to a large extent, extent, especially the last few months, as I've noticed, my average view duration has dropped probably by like 50,000 views per video because YouTube also is getting ready to further suppress and already further suppressing political content ahead of the election in order to artificially boost more mainstream content. What I might do later this year is pivot to a growth strategy for a month or two, which involves designing videos that are more searchable so they would involve keywords and kind of more descriptive titles instead of the often generic titles that i do because as a youtuber there are three different kinds of videos there are videos for the subscribers for the community there are discoverable videos that people can find by searching for keywords although youtube does manipulate that by artificially boosting mainstream content to the top of the search results but for some topics you can still get around that filter. And then there are 
sh- viral shareable videos that also drive traffic, which are also suppressed on channels that have been identified as news channels like mine. So at some point I may start doing, like I said, just a little bit different strategy to try to grow the channel because I really do want to get to 2 million subscribers. Also what I might do, I might not, but I've been thinking about it, is I may switch up my schedule to no schedule. My kind of unofficial schedule, as you probably know, is content Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then I try for Wednesday, Thursday, sometimes on a Saturday, sometimes on a Sunday. But I may just switch it up to whenever I do a video, I'm just going to post it. And so that way, I might post videos in the afternoon, in the evening. I may miss a video on a Monday or Wednesday or Friday. So that might be part of my strategy as well because very, very soon things are going to get very crazy and there's going to be a lot of stuff that needs to be covered. Also, when I stick to a schedule, sometimes I feel like I have to put out a video that isn't as good as it could be. You know, since my unofficial schedule is the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So when it comes around and I feel like, oh my God, I have a video done. If it's a slow news day or if I'm tired, if I've been busy, my creativity is not flowing. Sometimes in order to make that schedule, and this is kind of a common thing with YouTubers who stick to a very strict schedule. Sometimes I feel like the videos could be better. And so if I just decide to start throwing them up at random times, whenever they're done, that might be better. And I may have to do a follow-up video on the cancellation of Candace Owens. Because I'm waiting to see what little Ben says in his show today. I watch it so that you don't have to. And to see what Matt Walsh has to say. Because he has been mysteriously quiet on Twitter these last few days and all weekend. When he usually lives on Twitter and can't go more than two hours without tweeting. And there's a lot of other things. The fallout, the backlash. This is a story that's not going to go away. We should make it the Daily Wire's Bud Light moment. You have to see Rabbi Shmuley Botox, whatever his name is, Shmuley Botox, we'll call him, having a total mental meltdown, which I did post on my Locals page, by the way. So join my Locals community if you don't want to wait to see it. You have to see it, as well as Charlie Kirk's cowardly response, Michael Knowles, cowardly response this other daily wire host clavin his name michael clavin's cowardly response or andrew clavin whatever his name is it doesn't matter another daily israel or i'm sorry daily wire host and people need to be reminded that in 2016 ben shapiro literally wanted hillary clinton to beat donald trump will trump hurt conservatism if he loses badly they said Goldwater did, but Nixon got elected four years ago. I mean, I think that he's already hurt conservatism pretty badly. I, m- my concern is that, and one of the reasons I'm not voting for him is because I'm concerned that he hurts conservatism if he wins. If he wins, then <laughs> it, really, because, th- because then you see this whole group of people who sort of follow him position to position based on loyalty to party and loyalty to, loyalty to him personally. Uh, if he, th- that's, that's a serious concern to me. If he loses, uh, I think that he hurts conservatism less in some ways because there's been a repudiation of, of some of the things that he believes and says. Never forget that. Ben Shapiro wanted Donald Trump to lose in 2016. And since I'm not a neocon shill working for Conservative Inc., the bud light of conservatism, Ben Shapiro, I'm just a guy in my kitchen on a laptop who makes videos, writes books, and sells some pretty awesome t-shirts, like my new Free the January 6 Hostages shirt, which you can order from my online store at markdice.com, or click the link in the description below. And in case you haven't heard, I launched this new Sorry No Vacancy Deport Them All shirt. A whole bunch of different awesome designs over there. My Hey Liberals, Leave Them Kids Alone shirt. Trump 2024 design. Conspiracy Theorists are Right. Ultra MAGA. All available on a t-shirt. Or actually, most, many available on a t-shirt. And long sleeve and a hoodie. And a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below. And check them out.